Hello everybody, my name is Raging Raptor and I welcome you to a new weekly World of Tanks news episode. Today we have the information from the 1st of May until the 8th of May. And before you're asking, yes, I should have done it yesterday, but after doing four videos, two for my German channel and two for you guys, I decided to take the rest of the day off, do some streaming, have some fun with some people and just do it today when I was a little bit more relaxed and had a good mindset on and was able to prepare once again a little bit of a different approach as we did last time with the Q&As, how we have it a little bit more structured. So for the, te for the news we have for this week is we got some super test low tier changes. A quick little glance at the Valiant, which I was looking at in depth in a different video. The common test, we have a sneak peek at the Lorraine 50T. Some other t common test hidden changes, which will be coming very soonish. And <coughs> new skins in 1.9.1, most notably for the Chieftain and the EBR. And lastly, we have some miscellaneous things. Now, let's start with the low tier changes. And here we have Wargaming said themselves they did notice that tanks like the BT-7, tanks like the Convalentor, they simply didn't perform as they wished it to be. So they decided to do some changes. So yeah, for example here, the, the change to the BT-7 is first things a uh, nerf to the whole traverse speed. Okay, but for that they make the tank gun more accurate on the move. So is the turret traversal a bit quicker and the aim time as well as accuracy during fully aimed in and during after each shot is made better. So the BT-7 got a little bit of a nifty buff right there. The A20 getting quite a substantial buff in my personal opinion. I already free marked this tank and it's pretty fun to play as it is very, very speedy and reminds me a lot of the T-52 back in the days. Now it can go up to 23 kph in reverse, gets 10 meters additional view range, which is quite a lot on this, lot such of a low tier on tier five. And both guns, the 76mm, which has a 110 alpha, if I'm not mistaken, gets a one second fast reload time and 0 0.03 accuracy more. And the 45mm gun gets a 0 0.1 second faster aim, a reload time and 0 0.02 accuracy more. And for both tanks, for both guns, they change the dispersion on the turret traverse by quite a bit and um, the accuracy after shooting. So yeah, the A20... Um, it's regarded on both ways. Some people absolutely love this tank, like the Felix. Other people absolutely hate it, like Devi Ross, a friend of mine. So it's hard to tell how this tank really is. The good thing about this tank is it's a lot of fun to play. The biggest issue, however, is it's very, very poor penetration rate <coughs> on both guns. However, this buffs makes the 76mm gun more convenient to use and maybe the better option, as it also have more alpha to boot and is a little bit easier to play for the normal player. Next up, the KV-1S is also getting a little bit of a buff from the turret traverse being a little bit quicker. It gets better gun depression angles on the 85mm gun from 3.5 to 5 degrees, which is quite a jump up. They also made the 122mm howitzer to be more accurate and they decrease the dispersion after firing a shot. Not many changes, I still think the KV-1S is bad for its tier, but I don't know. I hardly play this tank, so it's hard to judge, really. Then they did some changes to the Crusader, arguably one of the worst tanks at tier 6 right now. They luckily did buff the speed, as you can see, from 50 to 58. They also made the guns a little bit more accurate. But then again, I have to say, uh, what are you doing? You, you are giving the guns more accuracy, especially during movement, which is horrible, by the way, in this tank. But why do you buff the, um, the howitzer? Nobody's using the howitz, really. It is this six pounder gun. And the six pounder gun is still garbage when you do 75 damage against tier eight opponents when you're unlucky. No one gives a damn about 75 damage. Plus you have pretty mad penetration rates to boot. I don't know, Crusader, I it was already a mediocre tier five tank and now it got buffed a little bit more and it's just a bad tier six scout. Let's be honest, luckily enough, it totally works out for the whole British light tank tree. All of those tanks are shite, let's be honest. Now, go on, let's go to the Convalentor, the T5 tank, which used to be a T4 tank and plays with like a T4 tank. I actually had a lot of fun playing this tank, even though it has garbage penetration rates. <coughs> the funny thing was this pom-pom. 
the bow was 40 millimeter gun when it was just doing this pump, 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 pump. Like, it is actually a lot of fun to use. You had to use a lot of gold penetration. You can see from 63, they buffed it to 86, and the premium is from 101 to 112. So this is a quite substantial buff, in my opinion. So that is kudos to Wargaming for doing this. However, they did change the reload time from 6 to 7 seconds because they also gave it a little bit more alpha. More speed is always nice, better dispersion rate is always nice, let's be honest. And yeah, in overall, the tank will be a lot better. It still won't be a good scout. It will be most like a pocket medium. And if you know how to play it as a pocket medium, it will be a lot of fun. And again, the pom pom bofus is arguably something I sometimes miss in higher tiers. Like, I know Wargaming doesn't want to introduce auto cannons in higher tiers, but sometimes I really have the urge to have something with very, very little alpha, like, I don't know, 100 to 200 maximum on tier 10 with like a four shot auto load, which can. Um, and well, not four, that might be a little bit too much. Like a two shot auto loader. Uh, let's say that it has 100 alpha and like a four shot auto load, which it can unload in like two seconds. So it does 400 damage in two seconds, which sounds a lot, but depending how long the reload time is, it could be a lot of fun, really. Like that would be, I think you could totally implement this without being busted or broken. And it could be a lot of fun for the user because it would be something completely different. So yeah, the Convenantor is actually a really fun tank. It's fun and unique in its own way. So good to see that it also got some buffs. Next up, the Cruiser 4. It got some changes also, the same changes as the Convenantor, basically, with the QF 40mm Bofus gun. Penetration, alpha buff, reload time, nerf, etc. And making it a little bit less accurate. Com which is understandable because it does have a decent chunk of wumps in it. Now we come, oh, no, sorry, one more thing, the Cavalier, it got some improvements. I already think that thought this tank was pretty garbage. I don't really know why exactly Wargame decided to introduce this tank. <coughs> it's just blah. It got faster, it got better engine, it got a faster reload time. So that is good, but I think still the penetration rate suck big dick in this tank. So yeah, I don't know. It won't be anything for me. Maybe once in a while a uh, gun mark challenge. Well, we've got a new super test tank. This is the Valiant. Um, I already did a video about it. Basically, it is a Matilda on tier 5 with actually better armor. Maybe it will be useless because the gun is absolutely garbage. It's the same gun as we have on the um, on the tier 5 heavy tank. I forgot the name of. Well done, Raging. Well done. It's not Excalibur. That's a tier 60D. Um... I think it is also something with E, but whatever. Then, a little sneak peek at the Lorraine 50T. I willingly don't want to release a video yet on this tank. I know other people already did, which is understandable. I want to wait for the damage model to be released because as soon as 1.9.1 test server is being updated, we have access to those juicy <laughs> damage models. Why is it important? Because the tank really relies on its armor. It is a Lorraine hull with 155 millimeters of frontal armor. It is an AMX M4 turret with no real cupolas and <coughs> 10 degrees of gun depression. So yeah, its whole, let's say its, its whole um, marketing value of this tank, of this tier 9 heavy tank is, it is incredible fast for a heavy tank of its size and its weight and its armor. It has a 20 HP per ton ratio. It has 10 degrees of gun depression, a very strong turret it looks like, and a decent frontal armor plate, which won't hold off a lot, however, if it is getting shot at, at a flat angle. And it has a 120mm gun with decent penetration, but a crappy 1600 dpm. That, that is very, very little. Imagine, the 50B has this in a clip. While this tank is absolutely garbage in that tank. So yeah, I really do want to wait for the armor model to be released because then we can assess the tank a little bit further. Hidden changes to 1.9.1, the K91-2 got some nerfs, which are arguably understandable. The tank really did look um, strong. However, the nerfs are actually <laughs> not that different. So it got a little bit less accurate on the move and on the turret, um, on, yeah, in general, on on the move. It also lost a little bit of DPM from the looks of it, which is understandable. And yeah, now it has a 2400 DPM and not 2600. However, they did give it 5 kph better top speed, which is weird. Again, the armor of this tank is very, very strong. It has 360 alpha as far as I remember correctly. I don't know. 
It looks like a very, very strong vehicle still, so we'll see how this tank performs. Maybe it's a 777 clone with really shitty gun values, you know, gun dispersion on the move. Arguably, those values don't really reflect that. Now, those things are, in my opinion, the biggest banger for this week. This is probably a new skin which we're going to have in the summer campaign with the Chieftain and... My goodness gracious, Wargaming, in 1.9.1 you want to introduce <coughs> dynamic 2D skins. Come on, give us dynamic 3D skins. I want to make this skin look a little bit more like me and it looks absolutely fantastic already. Like, again, whoever does the skins in World of Tanks is a genius, is amazing and it's so much fun to look what they can do and... It's insane, really. Like, this shot is just... It's really finger-licking good. And it just shows how menacing this, um, this chieftain actually can be. Again, the only issue I'm having with 3D skins in general is that most of them look all the same. Like, every single IS-7 skin looks the same. And I kind of want to have, in the 3D skin department, also the ability to customize them a little bit. I don't know, maybe add some emblems to them, some inscriptions to them, somewhere, somewhere. But yeah, Chieftain skin looks glorious. We also have an EBR skin, which uh, will be available just from then on, as far as I know. This one will be for the Clan Wars campaign in summer. Apparently, and this one will be just always there. And it also looks very, very cool. It looks, in my opinion, a little bit better than the real um, normal skin. I don't know. Just resonates a lot better with me. It, it has cool colors. It has a very unique shaping of it. I don't really know what this front bumper is. Maybe it's better for ramming. Kappa. Obviously, um, 3D skins, they don't do anything for the ramming or anything. This is just added to look a little bit nicer. And I think it does look a lot nice, like it looks like a very, very cool and unique tank. So very well done again, and I'm looking forward to rock this skin on my free for on my EBR. Then we get a Canada Canada Centurion. I don't know, it's I far as I know is for Canada Day. Um Yeah. What can I else say to that? Well, let's go to the last part of the video. First things first, this week we got a new care package, Starry Knights is up for grabs. It gives you the Love as well as the Raimatos Scorpion G as a, as a, with a 20% discount, which is pretty darn easy on those tanks, especially the Scorpion G, which is consisted to, considered to be one of the best tanks or best credit maker in the game. If you know how you use it, you get a new 2D style, you get some more 5 times and those juicy juicy booklets, which gave you each 60,000 experience per nation and you get some more um what's it called some more missions you can do and if you do them you get additional rewards which is pretty darn easy and lastly for this week we have a parade of discounts and offers and missions so don't forget to use those discounts to get some new tier 10 tanks no discount on premium tanks which is a little bit awkward in my opinion it kind of surprised me probably they didn't want it to make it because then it could have been stacked with those discounts right here and we, we all know how wargaming tends to work. So yeah, don't forget you still have the 2020 May celebration. Get one free day of World of Tanks Premium. Um, if you want to get some new equipment or in general just get some new tanks with new equipment, it's your time to shine and get those. So yeah, and don't forget to customize your tanks. Lorraine 40T, pretty decent tank. I really enjoy playing it. It's a fun tank and it's, in my opinion, a very well balanced tank. Lance and C, same goes for that one. It's a very unique tank. I really like this tank and it's one of the only tier 8 tanks I actually have free marked from the premium department. It's a lot of fun. The only real big issue is it's very, very bad gun handling, but it's nowhere near as bad as the one-to-ones. But yeah, that wraps it up. That's everything I've got for you <coughs> when it comes to our World of Tanks weekly news. I hope you enjoyed today's format. If so, let me know in the comment section below. And if you are not subscribed yet, then consider subscribing if you want to keep up to date with all everything World of Tanks related. Obviously, I say this when I was a day late. Good job, Raging. Very well done. Thank you so much for watching. Let's hope my PC doesn't burn down. And well, maybe I will gotta wait for some more videos until I have my real PC finally fixed up the so goddamn uh, issues. Cheers, guys. Have a great day. Have a great weekend.